Hello. Well, it sure is good to see him up here again, isn't it? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen, preacher. Yeah. What a blessing. This time last year, I, we, was, we was worried. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, thank the Lord uh, for Pastor Bill and Amen. Ms. Darlene and you folks here. I always look forward to coming here, and I'm expecting a big weekend. And I'll tell you what we're going to do. I, I'll try my best to do my part. I promise you. And you do your part, and we don't have to worry about the Lord doing His part. Amen. Right, right. Uh, my part is to help, invite, work, pray, and have something ready to give you. Your part is grab somebody by the arm and get them in here. The Lord's part is to convict them and draw them to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our ministry. That's our purpose. That's a great commission. So it's good to be here tonight. And uh, I'll, I'll say just a thing or two. We'll get right in the scripture. Man, y'all don't mess around, do you? Uh, uh, ten minutes and I'm up here. That means I got to whenever. Uh, okay. Uh, good to see Brother Ken and his wife from up in Sarasota and all of you that are visiting here tonight. So here's what I want you to do. Tomorrow night, I'll be uh, bringing the updated video multimedia uh, presentation on the signs where we are on God's calendar. Uh, as you know, as you know, there's things happening tonight that we never would have even believed would happen just a few years ago. And I remember, I remember back in the 90s, I used to preach that the day would come when you'd have to take your hand and or across the thing for pay for your groceries. Yep. And I preached that and believed that yep. in the 80s, in the 90s. Yes, and now it's here. Right. We didn't understand how that could happen then. But how in the world that going? Nobody questions it now. Right. I used to preach that two prophets would lay in the street of Jerusalem for three days and everybody in the world could see them. Yep. Yeah. I remember preaching that and I thought, now come on now. Huh? How in the world everybody? Nobody questions that now. You can sit in your living room and watch a war live now. So it's ain't going like this, y'all. Going like this. It, it ain't going back. There ain't going to be no worldwide revival before the Lord comes. Ain't going to be a lot of people saved after he comes and the great tribulation with those 144,000 Jews preaching. But I tell you, the prophecy for this generation is uh, in case of war, in case of rain, the war is going to be held in an auditorium. That's it. That's right, buddy. It's, it's going down, down. And so you don't want to miss tomorrow night if you have anybody in your family who's not a Christian, who's not saved, skeptical, or whatever, don't believe the Bible, you get them here tomorrow night, and, and I will prove the Bible's true tomorrow night. Amen. I mean, you don't need no proof, but you know what I mean. And so I hope that you'll do that 6.30 tomorrow and get a free barbecued supper at 5.30. So uh, can't, if, if you don't like preaching, at least you get a free supper. I mean, my goodness, you ain't going to get that nowhere else. So uh, this is the cheapest show in town right here, y'all. <laughs> but uh, anyway, anyway, uh, we're going to uh, look forward to a great time in the Lord. You'll be here every night. Bring somebody with you, and uh, we'll talk about a lot of things tomorrow night. Taylor Swift and the whole bunch. Yeah. Yeah, the whole bunch. Might as well get them all while we're at it, right? Yeah, man. Amen. You know she's promoting witchcraft. Her favorite yeah. day is coming up. Man. And so uh, uh, let's, uh, let's all be here tomorrow night. Bring them kids tomorrow night. Yeah. Come, we're going to have a fall festival. Yeah. And we are, ain't we? Yeah. We're going to have a fall yeah. festival. Okay, I'll mention some of that in a minute. Uh, yeah, we did, well, where I live, we got it pretty bad, but uh, 20 miles up. I mean, we had 1,000 trees down and floods and stuff, uh, but up above us, 20 miles, is really, really bad. You're not hearing it on the news, but there are literally... Literally thousands of people uh, that's nowhere to be found. And they won't say the statistics because they're not confirmed, you know. If you can't find a body, you know, they're not. But where'd they go? On vacation for four weeks? Uh, they're missing. And so, so literally thousands. Uh, we, know, we don't have hurricanes in the mountains. I mean, it don't happen. The mountains around us, they protect us. But this time, they say that the mountains were like a dam. And when that uh, Helena came, it run into them and just stopped. And there were places way up above us that got 30 inches of rain. And you know, when you heal like this, almost it's got to go somewhere. Yep. It all come down. And there's houses and barns and businesses just floating down the river. Uh, and uh, I, I do know a preacher friend of mine, but Luther Carver. You might remember Luther used to preach for us. His son 
uh, was killed. David sang gospel, sang church his whole life. Good man. And the flood was coming down on the house, and he was he was uh, out digging a ditch around his house, trying to divert some of the water. And his house broke in two, and not pushed him down in a in a ditch and in a drain pipe, and he was stuck. And his neighbor came over and sat there with him for eleven hours, wiping the mud out of his eyes uh, before they could rescue him, and he died. And that was a preacher friend of mine's son. And there's thousands of stories like that. One little boy uh, was only nine years old and was out wandering around trying to find something to eat. Mom and Daddy did in the house. And FEMA don't even FEMA don't even know where them places are. Up all them little creeks and hollers, these houses and people by the thousands, and it's been mostly neighbors helping out neighbors. That's what most of the relief has been in churches mostly. So um, it's really really bad. Some of the people I do I have heard of some uh, churches do, having some services and people getting saved, and that's good. But nothing like this has ever happened in those mountains since Noah's flood. Nothing, nothing can compare with this. And so please pray uh, for the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, well, I live right, in, well, we live actually in the mountains, but it's lower ones, lower part of them. And so please pray for them. All right, let's take a Bible tonight. I want to turn to two passages of Scripture this evening. Acts chapter number uh, 26. Acts chapter number 26. And then we'll turn to First, or, uh, First Timothy, I'm sorry, Second Timothy chapter 1. So we'll look at two passages of Scripture. Got your Bible, don't you? Amen. Got your Bible? Don't come to church without your Bible. Amen, and I didn't say phone. I said Bible. B-I-B-L-E. Some people think they're too cool now to bring their Bible. Yeah. No, you're, no. you're too evil Amen. to bring your Bible. Amen. Acts chapter 26, and look at verse number 24. And then we'll turn to 2 Timothy, so have that one handy. And as he thus spake for himself... Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Now, hold your finger there just a second. That's an interesting little term there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Somebody beside herself. What in the world? You know what that meant then? They're crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Beside yourself. That's a good way to explain it, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> You're here. And something else, somebody else here beside you. Much learning doth make thee mad. That word mad don't mean angry. It means crazy. Insane. Yep. Now, they call him insane. They said, Paul, you're insane. Yep. Now look at 2 Timothy 1. And look what he said about it. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter number 1, verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, Amen. but of power yes. and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Paul knew exactly what he was doing. And what he was talking about. Now I want to preach tonight on the subject how to keep from going crazy. Yeah. Now, now we're living, now I'm not kidding around. I know a lot of people right now that just about snap. And I'm talking about church people. Yeah. The pressures are so great. Yeah. The world has gone so bizarre, yeah. and so many things are happening all at once. Somebody comes up to me and they said, Brother Danny, I think I'm going crazy. I, I, I mean, this happening, that's happening. Yeah. I mean, you get up, you have all good intentions. You get up in the morning, you think of a hundred things you need to be doing and places you need to go. And, uh, and you get the kids up, you know, and they don't want to get up. And one of them's crying and other them can't, ain't got their homework ready. And, and you're going through the house trying to get, and your husband sends you a text that don't forget, oh, you're supposed to go to the bank and make that deposit. And while you're getting the kids ready, everything else seems to be uh, getting worse. And you, got, you forgot, got to take your mom to a doctor appointment at, at uh, 1 o'clock and, and you didn't even get up time to read your Bible and pray and preacher's been fussing about it and fussing about it. You ought to spend time in prayer before you go anywhere and you, and then you got to stop and get gas. You've got to get it in your lights on. You ain't got but 12 miles uh, to go and school's 15 and have start working on your mind and then you, you turn the radio on trying to let the kids are fussing in the back seat you know and, uh, and the next thing you know your car's making a weird noise and you're going to have to get that thing checked out and you've been trying to get him to and he's too busy and ain't paying no attention to you and you get a phone call from your cousin they need help uh, cause there's brothers on drugs they ain't got no money and want to know if you could help them out and get them a place to stay are you getting depressed yet yeah. uh, and, and you know it just gets worse 
worse and worse and worse and the kids are fighting and the next thing you know you say well I'll, I'll just turn on the news you know and uh, they say the earth poles are shifting now and it's going upside down and it's going to mean the end of civilization and we're all going to die and E. coli is in the food and if you eat anything from the store it'll kill you and airplanes are poisoning us with chemtrails and spraying out poison on everybody and, and everybody's going to die pretty soon anyway and all the hurricanes are man made you know they sent two on Florida and nothing coming in there too and the virus worse than the Wuhan flu is coming and you're, we're probably all going to die from that and the katydids are going to eat our kids and and yet you're going to try to keep your kids from watching Hocus Pocus next week uh, and all the Halloween he's like bam I'm, I've had it preacher I'm going crazy how are we going to stop <laughs> no not praise the Lord there's one done went over the edge right there uh, but you know uh, uh, it, the truth you know the, you know years ago the pressure was on uh, our, our, uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ Physically, they were in prison. They were burned at the stake. They were martyred. You know what? We're in 2024. You know where the pressure is now? It's on your mind and on our heart. The pressure, the pressure. I had somebody tell me not long ago, they said, Brother Danny, I, I can't take the pressure anymore. Just all of life, marriage problems, and in the world, Lord in mercy, I mean, good night in the morning. Uh, you hear so many crazy things uh, going out in the world. I'll preach tonight on how to keep from going crazy. Does that sound all right? Number one, here's what you got to do. If you want to keep your sanity in this day and time, number one, you, got, you must learn to stop listening to science and, and start learning the Scripture. Amen. Quit putting all your faith in man and what he can do and science and start learning the Scripture. Amen? Lose, lose science and learn the Scripture. How about that? You know what they believe? You know what scientists are trying to tell us today? They're trying to tell us that, uh, and you may believe this, that it's your business, you can believe whatever you want to. First, they tell us that we on this earth are spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. That means we are, oh, let's see, we are at least 500 miles away from where you was when you came in here tonight. 500 miles that way, that way, who knows? Well, that was spinning 1,000 miles an hour. Now, honest, y'all, do does it really feel like we're spinning 1,000 miles an hour? I mean, come on. Uh, uh, I mean, really, uh, and I'll tell you why they say that. They say that while we're spinning 1,000 miles an hour, we are also going around the sun, say that's the sun, at 66,000 miles an hour. Like, yeah, we're going this way at 66,000, spinning, it ain't no wonder ain't nobody got no sense. Yeah. Everybody go crazy. You're spinning 1,000 miles an hour, going around the sun at 66,000 miles an hour, and the whole thing, the stars, the sun, the whole solar system, is going into outer space at a million miles an hour. That's, you gotta be smoking crack, believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Show me a scientist that can prove that. What a bunch of bull, brother. You gotta be kidding. You know, you want me to tell you why they you want me to tell you why they tell you that? They don't want you to believe the Bible. They say we're at the big bank, the big heaven, and only spit it out, and we never have stopped. We just kept going uh, through outer space. That's not true. I don't believe that a bit more than I. I, I, I listen, people. Uh, that, that, you, stop listening to science. You see, they'll make you think you are an insignificant accident that you have no purpose in being here. And while we're spinning 1,000 miles an hour and going around the sun 66,000 miles an hour and going through space a million miles an hour, there was a lightning bolt struck a mud puddle and two amoeba, amoebas uh, formed and a, and a little uh, light something wiggled and then it got him a girlfriend. They had babies and it took billions a billion years to do this and millions and millions and millions of years and then it finally turned into a frog. And the frog hot out of the water and said, man, I'd love to have one of them coconuts. Them look good. And so he growed him a tail. Took a few million years. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, got, you, got, you know what you got to do believe that? An idiot. Yeah. Right. Amen. You say, you shouldn't talk disrespectful. They shouldn't disrespect the Bible like that. Right. That's right. Amen. Yeah, hey, you think I'm being disrespectful? The Bible said the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. A man who says there's no God is a fool according to the Bible. 
You know, you know, it turned into a orangutan and it fell out and broke his tail off. But on a suit and clo clothes said, I'm a man at last. No, that took millions and millions and millions of years. And you have no purpose. You just die and that's the end of you. Uh, but, you know, just hope for the best. That's all I do. Hope for the best. Hope you don't get cancer and die. Uh, just hope for a good, happy life. You know, as a man said, he said, uh, once I was an amoeba when I began to begin then I was a tadpole with my tail tucked in then I became a orangutan swinging from a tree now I'm a doctor with a PhD that's, what it is. that's right brother amen amen and the world tells you hey quit listening to science you know, they're all about listen to science. They're all about listening to the science. Listen to the science. Listen to the science. They don't listen to the science when it comes to abortion. All God's people said. Yeah. Uh, this might be a little strong for some of you, but you've got to grow up sometime. I will do it tonight. Uh, I mean, it just, just get over it, y'all. Get over yourself. And let's, they, don't, they don't follow the science when it comes to abortion. Did you know scientifically it has been proven that an unborn child is a human being? I, if anything, I can't stand these nut liberal women jumping up saying, my body, my choice, my body, my, just, just hush, you nut. You know, they, nobody's arguing about your body. Right. Right. You can do whatever you want to with your body. Yeah. Yeah. Have at it. We're arguing for the baby's body. Right. That's a separate person. Yes, it has its own brain. He has its own personality. He has its own DNA. And God in the Bible names some of them while they're in their mother's womb and ordain them to preach. Amen. So an unborn child is a child. Scott Peterson's in prison right now in California serving a life sentence for a double homicide. Y'all, you listen? Are you listening? You'll learn a little something if you listen once in a while. Uh, amen. Uh, he, he killed his wife, Lacey, and their unborn child, and the state of California charged him with murder yep. for that baby. Amen. That's right. Listen to the science. Amen. Listen to the science. Well, I'll tell you what it is. If it, here's the way it goes. If we are pro-life, they are pro-death. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, not pro-choice, pro-death. Right. We believe in letting the baby live, they believe in killing it. Yeah. Amen. amen, preacher. Uh, we, we, we are the far right, they are the far wrong. Yeah. Right? right. Well, saying, amen. We are straight, they are crooked. <laughs> yeah. right? We're on opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. And so quit listening to science. They laugh at us for believing the Bible. They say, oh, you stupid Christians, you believe in talking snakes. Well, we believe a, a serpent didn't talk one time. Yeah. Yeah. That's not as dumb as believing it all got here by an accident by itself. Right. Yeah. Amen. That's right. You believe that all the snakes come from a rock. Don't talk to us about being dumb Christians. Amen? Hey, they don't follow the science, brother. Uh, the science, the first law of thermodynamics says that everything goes down. Right. Yeah. Everything goes to pieces unless it's worked on by an outside force. Right. You know how you prove that? Don't wash your car. Yeah. Don't paint your house. Yeah. It don't get better. No. No, don't touch your yard for 10 years. Yeah. Don't wash yourself. Yeah. No do. Uh, if you want to be here, uh, uh, you go down, brother. You go down. Right. The truth is, you ain't what you used to be, y'all. Uh, we're all going down like this right here. Right. Amen. I mean, you're getting wrinkles and getting uglier all every day, and you might as well just admit it, brother. That's the law. Of, that's the second law of thermodynamics. Right. And you young people better not make fun of us old people because you are right behind us. Yeah. And your days are coming, brother. Amen. Amen. They don't follow the science. Look, I heard, I heard a woman the other day that said she was, uh, she, listen, you think, they think we're crazy. I heard a woman the other day said that she was in a relationship in a love relationship with a tree, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's in love with this tree. It's her boyfriend. And it shows her, she refers to herself as ecosexual. Now these people make fun of us. And she's hugging this tree. I'm in love with it. I'm, I mean, come on, you know. You know what they used to do with people like that? They put them in a nut house. They give them a rubber room where they won't hurt themselves. I mean, can you imagine? Oh, darling, you're going to have to shave some of that bark. It's hurting my cheek. I, look, they, they think we're crazy. They think we're crazy. They think we're insane. Cut, listen, people. Don't quit listening to science. Start reading your Bible. Learn what the Scripture said. Don't worry about everything on the news, brother. Put your nose in that King James Bible and meditate therein day and night and you'll keep your sanity. 
Somebody said, I think I'm going crazy. Might be a good idea to lay your phone down for a few days and spend time in the Word of God. He said, I will meditate therein day and night. I will meditate therein day and night. You know how to keep them going crazy? Put your face in the book. Sit on Facebook. That's right, brother. One, bu- one bunch of people married the ocean. They said the world would run out of water uh, back in the 90s. It didn't. They said the world wouldn't have no clean air by the year 2000. It did. They said all the fault lines. They're saying that Florida's going to soon be under the, underwater if we don't quit driving cars because uh, the, uh, the ecosystem pushing the waves up and you're all going to be drowned. And all that. That's a bunch of bull, brother. Oh, don't worry about it. Don't you worry about that, buddy. Listen, you, you you live for God you start listening to the word of God and look, not lose your sanity and quit listening to signs the Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to a Christian who's not amen the Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to a Christian who's not now, I think you ought to read the Bible I've read my Bible for a long time 50 years and I've read this book so many uh, that it starts getting in you. And the first thing you know, you start viewing everything through the lens of the Scripture. That's what I've been trying to talk about to you tonight. Learn the Scripture. Quit listening to science and learn the Scripture. Look, we're not against science. Science is a good thing if it's real science. What we are against is false science. Amen? That's right. Make sure you make that distinction. That's right. Make sure it's real. Amen. Stop listening to science and start learning the scripture. Number two. Here's another way to keep them going crazy. Stop living in sin and start leaning on the Savior. Stop living in sin and leaning on the Savior. Everywhere I go, I meet Christian, Christian people that are deliberately living, uh, I mean, by the world's philosophy, just eat, drink, and be merry. That's all people think about. Get rich, have more stuff, be happy, get famous, be good looking, uh, be well known, be famous, be popular. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it, stop living in sin and start leaning on the Savior. You know what it's time for us to do? It's time for us Christians to realize that wrong is still wrong and right is still right. Uh, it's un- to me, it's unbelievable what we're seeing today, preacher. We are seeing pe- pe- people who live together and not even married just shack up and come to church like, like it's nothing and they should come to church. But they just act like nothing's ever nothing wrong, sing the choir, uh, something, just do whatever they want to do. And they say, well, uh, well, in God's sight, no, in God's sight, you, in God's sight you're shacking up. That's what you're doing. Uh, and uh, we got people uh, who are living all kinds of wicked lifestyles, living in sin, drinking alcohol. Uh, the, the Bible condemns the drinking of alcohol as a beverage. I'm telling you, alcohol's wrong to drink. Ain't that right? I'm talking about beer. I'm talking about wine. I'm talking about one little sip with supper on the ear. I don't care if your preacher does do it. I know he don't. But at some churches they do. I'm telling you tonight, brother, yes, sister, we wrong, still wrong. Amen. What did you think about me tonight? And I said, brother, I don't need this water up here. Could you get me a Budweiser and put it up here? Every one of you think, oh my goodness, I can't believe that. Well, if it's wrong for me, it's wrong for you. Amen, preacher. Amen. You say, well, Jesus made wine. I, you're showing your ignorance is what you're doing. The wine Jesus made wasn't like that stuff you get at the ABC store, people. That wasn't, huh? there's a different kind of wine. There's new wine, old wine in the Bible. And new wine was grape juice, like grape, just squeezed right out of the grapes. That's referred to as wine. And the wine they got now, I mean, there must be somebody in here guilty because this is not in my sermon. It just yeah. popped out, so I guess you'll have to deal with it. And you're somebody sitting here, you say, well, I ain't coming back. And I know you won't because that's why I'm getting you while you're here tonight. Amen. I'm going to load your wagon up tonight and give you a good dose because we won't see you the rest of the weekend. Hey, I just believe that Christians ought to live right. Amen. Amen. Preachers ought not drink alcohol. Amen. I know we're in Florida, but you don't supposed to go out naked either, showing you nakedness. Amen, Brother Danny. That's right, brother. That's right, people. Amen. Quit thinking about yourself. Start thinking about, listen, sin is deceptive. Sin ain't what it's cracked up to be. And any kind of sin, you get mad at the preacher for pointing it out, but he's actually trying to save you a bunch of heartache. You do wrong, you'll have heartache, people. You really will. I heard about these boys. They was out, and it's Christmas time, and uh, they was out and they decided to play a trick on them. There'd been people stealing their stuff out in, in the community. So they took all the trash out of their house, out, took the, out of the trash bag, got old coffee grounds, banana peelings, 
baby diapers and everything, put them in this box, and they wrapped it up, put Christmas paper around it, put a big bow on it, and put it out on the front porch. And they left the porch light on, and they went in the house and turned all the lights out. And so there, sure enough, the thieves come through. They saw a car come down, two or three old boys in that car. They saw a hit brake light, <laughs> backed up like this. A couple of them got out, looked around like this, run up there and got that package, stuck it in a trunk. Imagine how they must have felt. When they got home and opened that packet. See, that's the way sin is. That's the way that pretty girl is, boys. That's her. She got a pretty bow, but man, she got trash inside her. That's why that good looking guy is, y'all, flirting with you at work. It's like the boys that went one time they're breaking in people's houses. And they all got in there and they got to looking and they looked around, looked around, looked around and they're still in the jewelry and they're still in the fine china and they're still in the stuff that was worth anything. And one looked on the coffee table and there was a little, little uh, bottle there with white powder in it. He said, Charlie. And they said, oh boy. Charlie is a street name for cocaine. And they picked it up, put it in their stuff and they thought, man... We got it tonight. And they all went off, all went off, got, they got home dividing the spoils. You know, you get this, you get that, you get this, you get that. And they got said, man, let's do this cocaine. So they all got them out there and they got them a straw and got them a line. And, were, and it, it wasn't doing nothing to them. Yeah. Come find out that family had a big old dog named Charlie. Yeah. And they died and they cremated him. Yeah. And it, that was his exactly. Them idiots sucking dead dog bones up their nose trying to get high off of it. You say, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. It ain't as dumb as people suck real cocaine up their nose. You're smarter to suck dog bones than you are real cocaine. Amen? Listen, these guys, one time they was doing that same thing. They was going down to these, like here in Florida, you got all these RV parks where the old people live. And, uh, and they were, and they we're going down there and they were stealing their, their fuel, gas. They'd take a can like this, take a five-gallon can, put a hose up in the tank of that mo- uh, motor home, that trailer, camper, and siphon the water out. Y'all, I, you old people in here know what siphoning oh, yeah. gas is, right? Yeah. Where you stick a hose in the tank and you have to suck a... Yeah. And right when it hits your mouth, I can't put it in the tank. Yeah. I've seen my daddy do that many times. We didn't have, daddy didn't, we didn't have a gas can... Uh, Lawn more needed gas, you siphon it out of the truck. And, and uh, they're doing that, so they're down there getting gas like that. And this one old boy, he never did come back, never did come back, never did come back. And they said, man, we're going to have to go find him. And they went and looked, and there he laid in the grass. He was like, yeah. And he, he was green. He is sick as a dog throwing up. Come, to, come find out, he'd stuck that hose in the wrong tank. Yeah. Boy, he got the reward of his deeds. Now, that's what it's like when you lay down with somebody you're not married to. Amen. Why should it be strange that a preacher preach against, have to preach against stuff like that? That should be just, duh, Christianity 101. Right, right, wrong, wrong. I heard old Billy Kelly, he, he probably remembers Billy Kelly, big old fat preacher up in the mountains for years and years and years. Great big old guy. And he'd tell all kind of tales. And he said, uh, he used to preach in them mountain, little old mountain churches, town. And he said he's way up in the mountains, up there in the Appalachian Mountains where, where we live. And he's up there one time, and he's staying. They put him staying a lot of time back then, the preacher. I mean, they didn't have motel. They'd stay with families and stuff. And he stayed with this old woman that had a couple of boys, the old widow woman. She stayed a couple of boys, and every one of them dipped snuff. And uh, they'd have these spit tunes. Y'all know what a spit tune is. They had a can sitting over here, and they'd sit there wa- watching TV or reading about the thing, man. They could hit that thing and never miss. From here over across that wall. And it'd spit and spit and spit. And he said, well, one night he was laying there, and it, was, it felt like it was 100 degrees outside. They didn't have, they didn't have le- electricity much in uh, just a little bit. They had a refrigerator and a few little things. And he said, I woke up in the middle of the night. He said, I was so thirsty. He said, I could have uh, drunk a well. He said, I couldn't stand it. And he said, I thought, now, now if I go in there and get something to drink, and it's pitch dark in here, I'm going to kick over one of them spit cans, and it's going to get all over the floor, and they're going to get mad. He said, I'll just wait. He said, he laid there and laid there and laid there, and he said, I've got to have something to drink. I'm dying. 
And so he went, went and so he tiptoed through there and went real slow and, and went there like that. Finally got to the ice box. Sure, and there was a big old uh, cu- uh, cup of water. Man, he said, hallelujah. He got that water. He started drinking it like that. Man, it tasted good. And then he found that old woman's false teeth was in the bottom of it. <laughs> That's what it's like when you smoke that joint, boys. You the fool. You the fool. Yeah, man. That's right. It is. You drink that beer, girls. You're just a, like smoking a cigarette. The cigarette don't smoke. You smoke. You, he smokes. You're just a sucker. That's right. Hey, stop living in sin. And start leaning on the Savior. Number three, and I'll be done. You listen? What have I said? Stop listening to science and start learning scripture. Yeah. Stop living in sin, start leaning on the Savior. Yeah. Number three, stop looking for a sign and start listening for a sound. Amen. Amen. We're not sign seekers, right. we are sign readers. Yeah. And there are definitely signs yeah. in the Bible of the tribulation period. There are no signs for the rapture. Right. But Paul was looking for the rapture in his day. That's right. He said, we which are alive and remain shall be called up together. So he was saying like, it could happen now. The rapture's imminent. That means right now. And and we're going to talk about that tomorrow night. We're going to talk about the sign, but I'm not going to drive myself crazy trying to figure out if Netanyahu is really a Jew and is he making the right decision so I can say, oh, that means, no, no, hang on, I'm not going to waste my time with, uh, you know, the, all the stuff they're saying. Watching the news. I know Christians that spend more time watching the news than they do praying and reading their Bible. And it, you ain't going to have no sense if you do that. Amen? You say, well, I've got to turn it on and I've got to see what that happened. And you know how they do on the news. Our next guest is going to tell us about what's really happening. In, you know, and they all say the same thing over and 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 over. Oh, we see Israel surrounded by harmonies. We see famines. We see wars. We see moral collapse. All that's true. Right, we, do. we see the mark of the beast system being put in place. I'll show you that tomorrow night. All of that. But I'm not, I'm not going to drive myself crazy trying to figure out if Ukraine is going to be invaded by Russia and what's Germany going to do and all that. I'm going to spend my time listening for a sound, brother. Listening for a sound. And get everybody I can to rake with me. Listen, people, we could leave out of here tonight. That trumpet could sound tonight. And the dead in Christ rise first. And me and you would be caught up, thank God. Hallelujah. And we'll be with the Lord forever and ever. That's how to keep them going crazy. Amen? You say, the Red Sea's drying up. I know, I know. I've seen all of them. You say, Brother Danny, did you see the red heifer? Uh, No, I don't watch the view. Uh, You say, Brother Danny, uh, did you know that Trump's name turned sideways and backwards, totals up to be 666, and camel... Chameleon, uh, her, her name turns out to be 666. If you died by 400 and multiply it by 12 and 13, no, you go crazy trying to figure all that out. That's right. The blood moons. The blood moons are coming. Yeah. Now, the moon is going to turn blood one day, yeah. but don't pay no attention to the blood moons. Yeah. You know what it means? Nothing. You're right. You're right. Amen. When, when somebody sent me a text said, I believe we've just opened the sixth seal. I said, no, we have not opened the sixth. We ain't opened the first one. The first seal ain't been opened with up. Amen. You say, Brother Danny, Project Blue Beam. And, and the vaccine. They're going to say more and more vaccine are coming. And, 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 and he gave a speech the other day and said, Russia might be invaded and Israel's going to be invaded. Now look, ain't nothing wrong keeping up what's going on. But I'll tell you what you better do. Talk to your friends at work. Try to get them to come to revival. Amen. Call your family and get them in. And start listening for a sound. That's how I keep him going crazy. Yeah, man. That's how to keep him going crazy. Right. You say, well, Brother Danny, what about all these terrorists? Now, look, I got a word for all the terrorists in America. Mm. Here's, here's my advice. Very simple. Support the country you live in. Yeah. Yeah. Or go live in the country you support. Yeah. That's right. Is that a good idea? Yeah. Support the country you live in or go live in the country you support. If you don't like America, go live in, in Iraq or Iran and support it. Yeah. You're right. 
help yourself. But if you live in America, support America. Amen, Amen, Brother Danny. That's right, Brother Danny. You tell it, that's right. Thank you, sir. I'm telling you for all them amens there. Listen, people, our Bible is true. I know it's being attacked. I, I, I believe, I can't prove this. I know strong delusions coming during the tribulation, but I think, I think they're going to come out with something to scientifically prove the Bible's not right. But it won't be real. Like Project Blue Beam. You know, right now they can, I'll show you something tomorrow night. Tomorrow, they can beam an image in the sky and it'll, it'll, be, it'll be Jesus to the world. And this Jesus is going to say, my children, we must all learn to get along and all religions are the same. It's all over the world. And the Pope will be ahead of all the world religions when they all wind up coming together to worship the devil. And I believe, I can't prove this, but I believe, like I'm finding, like I'm finding water on Mars, pictures of Mars, come on, y'all. You really believe? Isn't it, isn't it coincidental that they get pictures of Mars right after AI comes out? Yeah. Now we got clear pictures of Mars, little rocks. Come on, come on. You really believe that's Mars? <laughs> yeah. And they're going to say, see there, there's signs of life on Mars. And that's where we come from. The alien group that lived there brought to this planet and seeded this planet. That's us. That's what scientists are believing now. That's what they say on the History Channel. That's what they say on ancient aliens. That aliens come and put us here and they're watching us and we're not quite ready yet for them to show us how to get along. Somebody's in the way. He that now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Right. And when he is taken out of the way, we are taken out of the way. Right. Yeah. And then strong delusion is going to set in. Yeah. Hey, they're going to prove the Bible ain't true. Right. But it'll be a lie. Yeah. Right. Amen. You better right. make sure your feet's on the ground. Yeah. You better make sure your salvation. Yeah. You better pray, brother. You better know you're saved. You fool around and get left behind and worship the Antichrist. Right, right, you say, Brother Danny, how can I know that the Bible's true? Well, it stood the test of time. Yeah, yeah, Science books change every 50 years. Right. Yeah, right. They keep inventing longer and longer and longer and longer periods of time. Yeah. Uh, if you go back far enough, anything like that. Uh, but uh, listen, but that ain't right. Listen, you don't have to worry about my... Jesus, the Lord said heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall right. stand forever. Yes. Amen. 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 Listen, brother, Nancy Pelosi will vote Republican before there's a word of this book right here, okay? Amen. Ain't gonna happen. No, sir, brother. Amen, brother. Justin Bieber will have to get a job at McDonald's to make ends meet before this book fails. That's right, brother. Elon Musk will be homeless and broke, sent out Walmart with a sign before that book right there fails. It'll never fail. It'll never fail. Amen. Donald Trump will have an affair with Hillary and run off together and divorce his wife before that book right there fails. Amen. Camel, chameleon, will tell the truth uh, before this book right here fails. Amen. Taylor Swift will get right with God and lead a woman's Bible study in speaking tongues before there's one word of that book right there fell. Listen, brother. P. Diddy will be voted the most moral man in America uh, before that book right there fell. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Jesus is coming. The old song says, Jesus is coming soon, morning, night, or noon. Yes, Many will meet their doom. Yeah. Yeah. Trumpets will sound. Right. All of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies. Yeah. Heavenward bound. Yeah. I've heard the old song, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Yeah. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home. Yeah in this world anymore. That's how I keep them going crazy. Yeah, yeah. You gotta realize it ain't down here. That's right. You say, well, what if this the economy fails and I lose money on that house and I lose all my stocks and bonds? Yeah, well, well that, that's gonna happen. Might as well get it. Better lay up some treasures up there where yeah. nobody can't get it. Right. Some of you that are stacking it up, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're gonna be awful disappointed 
Listen, when the stock market crashed the other time, 1929, they said there's people up on them top of them big skyscrapers lined up trying to jump off and kill themselves. Yeah. Yeah, because they had all their hope yeah. and stuff down here. Yeah. Yeah. You got a lot, God's blessed you financially. Use it wisely. Do something yeah. for the Lord. Get your heart. Give yeah. some to church. Yeah. Put the church in your will, y'all. Yeah. Give the yeah. church. The church been good to you. Yeah. I've got mine. I'm giving my, that was gift part. I've had people give houses stuff. Give it to the Lord's work. Amen. Don't get, get your kids. Don't hoping you'll hurry up and die so they can get it. Yeah. Yeah. That's awful. Yeah. Right. It's true. Yes, years ago, several years ago, wasn't too long ago. There was a man in this nation that had everything in this world that a man could want. His name was Robin Williams, the comedian. Yeah. Y'all know the story of Robin Williams. Yeah. Really smart, very, very talented. As far as talent goes, very gifted man, a comedian. I never, I don't think I ever watched one of his movies. I've heard about uh, that Miss Doubtfire and, and Mort Mindy and all that. that. To me, that seems like low IQ people would watch stuff like that and uh, make it even lower. And Robin Williams had everything a person could want. And I just heard the other day that he. He had, he had millions of dollars. So if, if, if you could snap your finger right now and say, I want a million dollars, I want to be famous. That's what most people would say. Robin Williams had every bit of that. He could have 10,000 girlfriends or boyfriends yeah, right. anytime he wanted. Yep. He had money, cars, fame. And he hung, tied a rope around his neck, jumped off his, out of his closet, and they found him hanging dead. He couldn't face life. He, couldn't, he didn't want to live no more. And they said that not too long before he died that somebody was talking to him in an interview and they brought up the subject of God and Robin Williams said, I don't know, is, is there a God? I don't know if there is or not. If there is, I wish he'd talk to me. And it wasn't long after that they died yep. and went to hell by his own testimony right. if he didn't right. get saved. Yep. Isn't it sad that there wasn't some Christian somewhere right. yep. in Hollywood that could set him down and say, Mr. Williams, may I tell you, God has spoke to you. Yeah, man. He spoke to us through his son. Yeah. And his yeah. son died on the cross Amen. to give you meaning and purpose in your life. Amen. And that might have story might have turned out completely different. Right. Yep. But because some, some Christian didn't do the job, yeah. Robin Williams didn't You're make right. it happen. Amen. You know how to keep him going crazy? Get your priorities on other people Get your own salvation settled first yeah. and then go out and tell everybody you can, Amen. get ready. Yeah. Jesus is coming. Amen. And I'll see you on the other side, y'all. Yeah. I'm here, there, in the air, right? Amen. I'm planning on being there by the grace Amen. of God. Amen. I'm not going to let this world drive me crazy. Right. Paul said we have this, not to have the spirit of fear, right. but of power, yeah. love, Amen. and of a sound you don't have to take pills every day just to cope. You can have a sound mind. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Come on, brother, we're getting a song. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Song being made ready this evening. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I want you to search your heart here tonight, young man, young lady, and I want you to ask yourself, am I ready to meet the Lord? Are you a Christian or have you been saved? you saying, Preacher, I don't know if I've been saved or not. If you'll come up here and get down on your knees, somebody can take the Bible and show you how to get saved. If you're here and you're a Christian, she's playing softly. If you're here and you're a Christian, you say, Preacher, sometimes I feel like I'm just losing it. And I'm going to get down there and get down on my knees and I'm going to commit my life and my family to the Lord tonight. I just get out of a seat. Come on, son, son's already coming. Some's already coming. Who will meet me here at this altar tonight? Hey, the Christians, and let's say, Lord, we don't want to go crazy. We want to live for the Lord. We don't have much time. Come on, that's right. Others, others, others. Just slide right out of your seat. Make your way down here. Say, Lord, help me keep my sanity. Help me stay right and strong. Lord, help us tonight. Father, I pray for that one, those here tonight who need to come. Lord Jesus, touch them tonight, I pray. Save that lost soul. And help them come to Jesus before it's too late. In your name we ask it, amen, amen. Let's sing it, brother, everybody. 482. Let's sing.
I can hear my Savior call. 